blurb off the um, starboard um, left side, right side, depending on which way you're looking, off, and found that. So somebody's had this off, and when they put the car back on, that did not go into that little channel. See how perfectly that fits inside that channel? So somebody didn't take care to make sure that that top piece went in, and I'm sure that affected performance. So, interesting. This is how the old float was set up, and it kind of explains why the engines tended to run out of gas. Especially the, uh, I haven't even pulled the port side yet. This is the only one of the four on the starboard side, eight total carbs. Um, but they tended to run out of gas, and it wasn't like they were stalling, you know, because there was something wrong with the engine. It, it was almost like they ran out of gas because a couple of times it would start to run out of gas, and I would run back there, and I would squeeze the, the bulb in the gas line, and they wouldn't stall. This has to do with the float, so it, it, it determines how much gas is readily available in the float bowl for the carburetors to feed to the engine. So this is how it was set up when I pulled it off. This is the old float bowl and the old, old float. And this is the new one, the way that I adjusted it. It should be even, not at an angle like that, I'll show you. And this is what it should look like. See how it's pretty much parallel with the throttle housing? That's the way it should be set up. Now they don't come like this. Even the rebuild kit, this float did not come like this. I have to basically shape and bend this section here um, to get it to be like that. But now this will provide more fuel in the float bowl and they'll be uh, less likely to run out of gas. Okay, so that is how it's supposed to sit. And that's about how much play it should have. Before it had about that much play. Very, very little. But that's about the amount of play it should have. And that's how it should sit. Pretty much parallel. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but it should be parallel, not way up there like that. Unfortunately, they don't come out of the box like that. It takes some shaping and manipulating and massaging to get them just tuned, but that's a part of the process. Looks like somebody before, this, these carbs have clearly been rebuilt already, and somebody before just basically took it out of the box and put these together, which is a, a really common mistake for a novice that maybe is doing a rebuild for the first time. I'm not sure if you can see how warped that is. I'll take a picture after I tighten it down, but there's clearly a space in there. This happens sometimes. I don't usually see it happen with carbs. I've seen it happen with fuel pumps and fuel vapor separators, but um, there's definitely a bow in that. Um, and I'm sure I could fit a feeler gauge up under there. That could be an issue. Yep, definitely an issue there. You can see how that's nice and tight, but right over here, see the gap there? and then it's tight here. That can't be tightened down anymore. Um, and oddly, even though they doubled up on these, so two of those came. So this is how they should fit. See how nice and flat that is all the way around? Oh, well, even there. Oh my gosh. That looks like that's bowed a little bit too. Oh no. Good on most of the sides. On that side, that side's perfect. But look at that. See that space? That should not be there. Um, anyways, they gave us two of those, so I could potentially put a second one in there and maybe help fill that gap a little bit. But they only gave us one of those. Gave us three of those, even though we only need two. Sometimes these carb kits are kind of strange. Um, I'm going to keep moving forward, but that concerns me. So I have the bowl sitting on a flat surface um, and you can kind of get an idea as I spin it here um, how it's warped. You can see right along there see how the ends are touching but right there in the center 
it's on it's raised up same thing here that's really bad right there you can see so that edge is not going to make contact with um, the other side with the housing see right there too see how each of the edges are touching um, but the middle is not you can even see kind of a shadow see there's should be making contact all the way along that should be perfectly flush should not be bowed you could really see it there see how warped that is on top of that it's it's warped going that way too so see when I press here it's not going up and down because these two sides are even but right here no matter where I press it should be it should not be moving so unfortunately I'm gonna put them back together like this but that's worked okay that cap that I just um, showed you is back on and you can see what a huge gap it is there so I've got some feeler gauges here and this is the very largest feeler gauge that I have which is sorry it's so rusted I can't even see what the measurement is but needless to say of all these feeler gauges it's the very largest one and as you can see that fits right in there that's too big of a gap in fact I can even move it up and down a bit you can see there there's more space than even that feeler gauge um, so I don't think there's gonna be a good seal um, same thing here you can see that big gap right there sorry it's hard to do this and all with one hand and film it too so you can see there the space there and as I slide it down it stops right there because there is no space here but there's a big giant space right there and it's less obvious there very obvious there you can see right there so if you take a look at the gasket that was in it um, that I've since changed. You can see the orange gasket. That, that's the new one. This is the old gasket. It's kind of di probably difficult to see here, but if you look really closely, you can see what is what's called the witness marks in uh, the mechanics world. Let me put on some light here. So you see these lines here right around that screw? Um, you see how it picks up right there? See how there's a line right there that goes past the screw that kind of comes all the way around? You see it pick up right there? And it follows all right through there. You can even see a circle around those screws. That's because the bottom of this was pushing into that. So that little round circle is that little round circle you can see how it corresponds with those marks there the problem is there there's that ring that kind of goes all the way around it so we should be seeing marks go all the way around that and as you can see when you get to there there's barely any mark at all and then it picks up there because this section is tight this section is tight this section is loose and it looks like it has been since whoever rebuilt this last rebuilt it so they rebuilt it because they were probably having problems with the carbs see how there's no witness mark there it stops right there so this whole section here is not getting a good seal um, see we we'll follow it right through here too almost nothing there I mean it's almost perfectly clean and then it picks up right there. You can see where that witness mark stops. So that area there is not getting a good seal. Uh, and then right in here as well. And then you can see it clearly picks up right there. I know it's difficult to see on this camera, but the bottom line is, this 
piece is warped and that's a problem. Um, it may work like that. Uh, it will work like that. It won't work well. Um, you're going to be leaking gas and well I mean you shouldn't really leak gas too much from here because this is the bowl that I showed you the float that I um, uh, made parallel and ideally the gas should really never come up higher than about there so since this is is right down like you know it this is vertical like this it may be okay but if there are if I run across any other warped parts um, that's really going to be a problem because it's not just a matter of it keeping fuel in, it's a matter of it keeping air out. You have to have the right fuel-air mixture. And inside this, uh, these chambers here, it has to create a vacuum to move air and fuel through that for the air and fuel to mix and to become a vapor. Um, with, without the proper seal, you get what's known as a vacuum leak and you're going to have all kinds of problems. Uh, you know, number one, your air fuel mixture is going to be off. You can have more air than you do fuel. It's not going to move fuel through since it relies on the vacuum in those spaces to move the fuel through. It's not going to move fuel through properly. Uh, it's just going to cause all kinds of problems. So, God, I hate to say it, but um, if these were my bowls, I would probably get new ones. Here's the next one that I'm about to work on. And honestly, it's even worse than the, the one that I was just working on. You can see here, there's a big space there underneath. Let's see if I can grab the feeler gauge and demonstrate that space. So here's a feeler gauge coming in. And you can see I can slide it right up under there in the middle. Okay, so that's maybe a little bit thick. Let's try a couple down. So here's one that's just sl slightly smaller. We'll move that all the way in. You can see I can move that in and out underneath that without the housing moving. As I move over to one side, you see it catches and then it catches there. So that's about how big the space is there. Same thing there. You can see, you can clearly see that warp. You can see some there too. Not as easy to see, but you can see it. Now again, this lip that runs all the way around does help make up a little bit for that gap. But if you look at it, that lip is not that big. In fact, it is smaller than the feeler gauge so you can see the feeler gauge is actually thicker and since I was able to slide that up under that tells you that that's not making a, enough contact that plus the fact that we have no witness marks there um, are, are very clear indicators that that bowl is not only warped but warped so much that I it's it's I don't know that it's usable go ahead and put them back together and I'm gonna, that's just the first two carbs from the starboard side. I started with those first because those are the ones that were visually leaking. Um, I can show you some video where um, it leaked just when I pressurized it with the ball valve. And then when I brought it out onto, then when I started the motor, uh, it leaked there as well. Um, so that's why I started with the, the uh, that side and those two carbs, uh, which maybe that's one of the reasons it was leaking. I don't know. I'm going to pull the other two carbs and see if those are warped. Uh, if so, then I'll pull all of them and I'll let you know which bowls uh, I recommend replacing. I know I've had to deliver mostly bad news about the motors and what I found and all, but here's some good news. So I went ahead and pumped out about half a gallon of fuel directly from the gas tank. And I also pulled the water fuel separator. I almost always find water in the water fuel separator. I mean, that's what it's for. That looks really, really good. Let me turn off the light. That's better. So um, that looks really, really good. I've let it sit all day long, which is enough time for water to separate and go to the bottom. 
and there's really nothing there. There's some chunkages down there, but that's mostly just from this. The bottom is, is rusted out. So I recommend a new water fuel separator. I can clean up that bottom and put it right back on, no problem whatsoever. But if it were me, I'd put on a new one. But I know that expenses are adding up, so don't feel bad if you want me to just clean that up and put it back. Uh, and this is directly from the tank. So I think you're using pretty good fuel. It seems to suggest that. I don't see any uh, evidence of ethanol fuel in there, but it, it looks clean. I almost always find water in a gas tank of, an, of a boat this old, and I'm really happy that there is no water. So I always check that because there's no sense in rebuilding the carbs and getting everything running really good and then putting uh, water through your, your carburetors all over again. Speaking of which, didn't find any evidence of water or anything. The carbs aren't that dirty, really. We did have that issue with the gaskets where it was pinched right up here. That probably caused some leakages. And then, of course, the problem with the floats that caused leakages. And then the warped bowls definitely caused leakages. But as far as cleanliness, they seem fairly clean. There's definitely evidence that somebody has rebuilt these Probably not that long ago. They just didn't do a very good job doing it, unfortunately. Didn't find any water, like I said. I did, however, find a good bit of oil. Usually what that means is that the engine's been sitting a while. You said only a few months, and this usually wouldn't happen in a few months. But if it sits for six months to a year or so, what happens is the gasoline evaporates and leaves the two-cycle oil behind and that by itself can gum up the ports. For instance, the idle ports are these two tiny, tiny little jets, and um, that's what's responsible for keeping the engine idle. There are two circuits. There's an idle circuit, and then there is a throttle circuit. And the idle circuit is solely responsible for keeping the motor running, and it's got tiny, tiny little jets that can get clogged up with anything, uh, oil included. So. That's what I found so far. 